Hello. This is the chap who normally comes on at the start of these podcasts, this time affecting a simply dreadful British accent, for if I don't miss my guess, you're listening to this as part of The Rack, the Icebox Radio Theatre's new podcast of fantasy and science fiction. And nothing says fantasy quite so much as an American actor attempting to sound like something he's not. Now, we love all of our listeners, of course, but we especially love those who have stepped through the velvet ropes to become a listening supporter. Castles and spaceships are quite inexpensive to render here in the world of audio, but petrol money for actors as well as new microphones and equipment are somewhat less so, so we continue to depend on you, the wonderful listener, to help us continue to bring these stories to the world. Simply go to our website, that's iceboxradio.org, and look for the word support across the top of the page there. On that page, you can learn all about our Patreon, you can learn about our membership program, or even just how to drop a fiver in the post. We're not picky. We just appreciate whatever kind attention you and your checkbook may be able to offer us. And now, since brevity be the soul of wit, I yield... For this evening's presentation. You are driving in a dark forest, the pine boughs heavy with snow. At the end of a long dirt track road, you arrive at your destination. It's a small weather beaten motel called Tajours Jelly. It's not much to look at, really. Just a single weather-beaten shack surrounded by a half-dozen equally run-down cabins. Out back, there's a dingy fishing dock right next to the spaceport. And a few picnic tables for cleaning fish, conveniently placed right next to the time portal. So it's easy to dispose of the chum. Come up to the office now. Let the bear in the tuxedo take your bags. Ask the time-traveling Viking at the concierge desk if you have any questions, and then step up to the main desk to meet the owner, Old Pierre. Hello, and welcome to to Jersey Motel. Looking for something to do? We have all kinds of tourist information right over here. I invite you to select a brochure from The Rack. This is a story about kids living in hard times. So you know, it's absolutely true. Way up north in Minnesota, at the very edge of America, there sits a little town called Icebox. The town's surrounded by lakes and woods, and then, as now, it was a pretty good place to be a kid. There was a nice public beach for summer... And it's so cold up there in the wintertime, the city builds outdoor skating rinks just by spraying water on the ground. It's a nice spot, this town called Icebox. But a few years back, in a terrible, wonderful era called the 80s, things weren't so nice. Most of the men in Icebox worked in one place, the mill. And the mill was talking layoffs. Come on, Pete. But our story's not about that exactly. It's not about the men who worked at the mill. Our story is about their kids. That's Riley and his little brother Pete. Two kids about your age. They're running along the lakeshore to a very special place. See, there's this old house in the town. Abandoned now, but a few years ago, a family had lived there. That old family had built a tree house high up in a big oak overlooking the lake. Could you imagine finding a perfectly good tree house going to waste like that? In the yard of an abandoned-looking creepy mansion to boot? Well, you can guess what the kids did. Just come on. Can I climb up first? Riley and Pete and all their friends made the treehouse into a secret meeting place. They'd been coming there all summer. Can I climb up first? Why? So if I fall, you can catch me. I'm not going to catch you. You have to. With what? I need two hands on the ladder, Petey. Don't call me that. It was August now. Summer was starting to wind down. School was only two weeks away, and things seemed kind of uncertain. But for Riley and Pete, there were more surprises in store. Right now. Boo! Whoa! Whoa! Gotcha. Nickerson. That was classic, man. I scared him to death. You almost spell, you moron. Classic. Get out of the way. We want to climb in. No way. What's the password? 
Nickerson is a stupid moron who's going to die in a hole somewhere because he's never nice to anyone. No, that's not it. Fine. Carbonite ice cream. Very good. You may pass. You're going to kill someone someday, Nickerson, and it won't be funny. No, Riley. It'll be hilarious. So what are we meeting about? I don't know. I thought you called the meeting. No, I heard from River. Okay, where's River? Right here, man. Move, Pete. Okay. Okay, so what's the meeting about? I don't know. But you called it. No, I didn't. I just had a flag up on Old Man Johnson's mailbox. Is that the signal? I thought we changed that. Well, it was up, so I thought there was a meeting. Help me, please. Well, look who climbed the ladder all by herself. Michelle's right behind me, and I only did it because my eyes are closed. Could someone please help me in? You're in, Susie. Could someone please help me in more? Just crawl forward. You'll be fine. Could you help her in, please? This ladder seems loose. Ah, that changes things. Move, Petey. Okay. All right, you're in. Thank you. You can open your eyes now, Susie. No, thanks. Babe, you're sitting right in the middle of the floor. I'll open them just later. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi, Michelle. Michelle. Glad to see you got my message. You called this meeting? Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have used Old Man Johnson's mailbox. We changed that. It worked, didn't it? That's not the point. Guys? Point is, we changed the signal. It's supposed to be the chair on Riley and Pete's porch. When it's turned upside down, we're having a meeting. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Guys! No, it's not, Nickerson. We changed it because my mom kept putting the chair right side up. The chair was actually before the mailbox. Oh, yeah. Then what was before the chair? Telephone. We should go back to that. Guys! No need to shout. Seriously? Yeah. I'm sorry. I called the meeting. We knew that. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Guys! I called the meeting to let you guys know that we're moving. What? What do you mean? My dad lost his job at the mill, and there's this mill down in Thief River, so we're moving. When? They want me to be able to start school down there, so in in two weeks. You can't go. Pete. She can't. I don't want to go, Petey. Yeah, but it, I don't know. You just can't go. It's not up to me. Well, sayonara, kid. It's been good knowing you. Nickerson, that's not nice. Yeah, man. Chill out. No, I'm serious. It really has been fun, but we knew this day was coming. What's that supposed to mean? Wake up and smell the Kool-Aid, Jim Jones. This town is doomed. My dad got laid off just like Michelle's. He's going on unemployment for a few weeks and see if something turns up in town. Otherwise, we'll be moving, too. Well, we're not going anywhere. Don't be silly. Of course you are. What? Your folks run a restaurant, Susie. If the mill lays off a bunch of people, then no one has any money. And when no one has any money, they don't go out to dinner. Riley, is that true? You're scaring Susie. Caterpillars scare Susie. I'm just telling it like it is. Well, you're bringing us down, man. You know what was going to happen this fall anyway, right? What? You, Michelle, and River were headed off to junior high. So? So it's junior high. Things change in junior high. You don't know what you're talking about, man. Yes, he does. Don't you start? Well, he does. Even if I would have stayed in town, junior high changes everything. No more recess. You change classes in the middle of the day and you shower and fi ed. Ew. Totally. It just... It changes things, okay? What happens to us? What? What happens to the club? If everyone's going to move away or shower and fi ed, how can we meet in the treehouse anymore? Well, there's next summer... Michelle will be gone, maybe Nickerson too, and Susie... Susie will be here. People always need to eat out. You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. No one does. Great. Last two weeks of summer ruined. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Shut up, both of you. She feels bad enough as it is. It's okay. I just... I didn't want you guys to find out about us moving from a rumor or something. I wanted to tell you myself... We should have a party for her. Uh. I can get decorations and food from the restaurant, and we can play games and... Susie, that's really sweet, but I don't know. Celebrating just doesn't seem right. Well, we need to do something. Yeah, yeah, we do. What's up, Riley? What do you mean? You got that look in your eye. Oh, yeah, that schemey look. The look you get when you're cooking up an idea. You totally do, Riley. I bet he has come up with something good. I bet he's come up with something awesome. What is it? You guys are dweebs. Come on, man. What is it? Riley? I was just thinking. 
One last adventure. You want to swim out to Canoe Rock again? Better. I think we should go after the gold of Cormant Bay. You are a wild man. High five. I'm serious. So am I. High five. I think we should. Riley, high five. Fine. Thank you. What's the gold of Cormador Bay? Cormorant. It's a bird. We're looking for bird's gold? You never heard the story, have you? I don't know. This is awesome. She's never heard the story. Dibs on telling it. Dang it. Too slow. Okay, so like a million years ago. Tell it right, Nickerson. Okay, so like a thousand years ago, in old time horse and buggy days. What's a buggy? I don't know. In old timey days, there used to be gold mines all over this lake. And there was this one miner they called Mutilated Jones, on account of he kept getting into accidents. He had like six toes left, and he lost his right hand, and his kneecap was all weird, and he had a glass eye. Nickerson, and... get on with it. Okay, so the way it used to work was you'd find some gold and go to the claims office to make a claim on the land. And one day, Mutilated Jones showed up at the claims office. He looked like he hadn't slept for days. He had a huge, crazy smile on his face. He threw a bag of gold nuggets onto the table. And then he said, I, Mutilated Jones, do hereby make a claim on Cormorant Bay, which is yielded the purest gold ever seen in this territory, a bag of which I have here. There's one more bag like a bag at the bottom, but please, Mr. Claims guy, keep this bag and gold nuggets safe in your safe until I return. And then he got back into his canoe, paddled away, and was never heard from again. And to this day, no one knows where he got the gold because no one has ever been able to find that mine. I know where the gold is. What? Last year, we took a field trip to the Historical Society. They have the bag there. Oh yeah, they do have a mining display there, and there is a bag of nuggets. There is? Pretty sure they were just spray-printed rocks, though. Hmm, interesting. So, dude. Yeah? You want to go looking for this gold mine? Why not? We're just talking about everything that's happening, about how none of us know where we're going to be or what we're going to be doing in a couple months? Why don't we do something big? I mean, huge. Why don't we go to Cormorant Bay? Um, because it's like 10 miles away and across the water and in Canada. And I don't think my mom would let me. Susie, how often do you need to check in? Um, lunch and then dinner. So if you left right after breakfast and told your mom you were having lunch with Michelle, only you didn't go to Michelle's, you would be gone all day, and your mom would never know, right? I guess. I know a way we could get to Cormorant Bay and be back in one day. Does it involve stealing a plane? No. Man, it never involves stealing a plane. Friday. Meet me here on Friday morning, 8 o'clock. Only not in the treehouse. Meet me in front and have your bikes. We're going to ride to Cormorant Bay? Just trust me. And that's how it began. Six kids in a treehouse looking for one more adventure before the leaves began to turn and their lives changed forever. Friday was one of those incredible days you get sometimes in summer. Not too hot, not too windy, a clear blue sky overhead and a cooling breeze off the lake. At 8 o'clock in the morning, Riley, Pete, Michelle, Nickerson, River, and Susie stood with their bikes on the old shore road that runs right in front of their treehouse. It was a perfect day for adventure, so naturally, everyone was afraid to start. Why can't we just go? I don't see what your problem is. Yeah, just tell us the plan, man. But I want to be a surprise. I'm going to get in trouble. No, you're not, Susie. Yes, I am. No, I told Mom we were riding our bikes to the beach, and I brought a lunch, so everything's fine. As long as you're back by five, your mom won't know anything. I don't know. She has many spies and informants. Say what? Riley, would you please just tell us where we're going? The little kids are scared. What do you mean, little kids? I'm not scared, and I'm younger than Susie. It's just a boat. Petey. What? Oh, right. I wasn't supposed to say anything. Wait. You told Petey where we're going? Sure he told me. I'm his brother. Harsh, man. 
if you tell one member of the club, you should tell all of us. You know, yeah, that's yeah. not fair. Very okay, not okay, fair. okay, fine. We're going to the Barnhart's cabin. Who's that? It's this old guy that used to work with my dad. Retired now and moved down to Texas. But he lets my dad use his boat whenever he wants. The wolf's just floating at his dock right now. And I know where he hides the key. You want to steal a boat? It's not stealing. Mr. Barnhart's told my dad he can use it whenever he wants. And I'm the oldest son, so it's practically the same thing. Can you even drive it? Sure. My dad lets me drive it all the time. Right, Pete? Sort of. What does sort of mean? Riley gets to drive the boat once my dad gets us out into the middle of the lake where he can't hit anything. Point is, I know how to start it, and I know how the controls work. We can take the boat, then it's like an hour to get to Cormorant Bay, look around until two or three, we go back to the Barnhart stock where we've cleverly hidden our bikes, and ride home before anyone knows anything. Come on, guys! Well, I suppose it beats watching TV all day. I'm in. I'm in. You are? It sounds like fun. It sounds scary. I'll be right next to you. Well, I was in the minute I found out we get to steal a boat. Let's go! And just like that, the adventure began. Now the old shore road hugged the lake for about a mile. The kids rode along without a care in the world, weaving around, racing each other, and occasionally even getting out of the way of traffic. Look where you're going, kid! By and by, they came to a nice cabin that sat on an open bay. A beautiful boat with shiny wood sides and a steering wheel just like a car bumped gently against the dock. Its nose pointed out toward the lake like a dog begging to be let out. After the kids stashed their bikes in a patch of tall grass, Riley led him up to the cabin porch where he lifted a flower pot to reveal a key underneath. See, right where I told you. And presently everyone was in the boat, nervously looking at each other and the huge blue lake before them. Um, this is a really nice boat. Thank you. What I mean is, this is a really expensive boat. Are you sure you know how to drive it? Pilot. You pilot (laughs) boat. Whoa, listen to that. Can we water ski? No. Race other boats? No, give me a minute. What about dynamite fishing? That's fun. Nickerson, shut up. I'm trying to remember which thing you pressed to start the doohickey. That one. Oh, right. Here we go. How come we're not going anywhere? Riley, you're still tied onto the dock. What? Your stern line. It's still tied to the dock. Oh, okay. What's that thing thing you said? Cast off? Right, cast off. I'm on it. Wait, no! Whoa! Dude, you ran into the reeds. I know that. I don't want to go treasure hunting anymore. It's too unpredictable. Oh, man, I'm so dead. I broke the boat. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Mr. Barnhart's boat is sitting on the sandbar. Dad's gonna kill me. You just ran into some reeds. The props fouled up. I'll clear it. What? Michelle, you'll get all wet. I got a swimsuit on under this. Hang on. Nickerson, give me an arm up. What are you doing down there? I told you, we had a bunch of reeds around the prop. They're clear now. Just put it in reverse and we should float back out. Um, reverse? I thought you knew how to pilot this thing. How come you know so much about boats? We spend all summer on the lake. Duh. Here, let me. Just ease it out slow, then turn to starboard. Here you go. Um, actually, how about you drive? I thought you'd never ask. This is a beautiful boat. Yeah. And you were going to run us up on the rocks for sure. Yeah. Hey! Can I try now? No. How about now? Nickerson, no. You can't pilot the boat. Come on, it looks easy. There's nothing to hit. That's what you think. There's rocks all over through here. Leave her alone, Nickerson. But I want to drive the boat. Could everyone please be quiet? How are you feeling, River? I'm fine. Just no one move or say anything. Man, I thought if anyone was going to be seasick, it'd be Susie. That's not very nice. No, but it's true. 
But it's not very nice. Let me drive. Tell you what, you can be the navigator. Do I get a gun? No. What? No. You get the charts, and you get to tell Michelle where to go. Oh, man. I've wanted to do that for years. Hey! Now, this is a really important job. Canada is just over there. If we cross over the border accidentally, the Border Patrol can pick us up and we'll all die. No worries. I'll just bribe them. We don't need to bribe anyone. But in case we do, I came prepared. Whoa. What is it? Nickerson. He has a bag of gold. He does? No, he doesn't. Yes, I do. That is the biggest gold I've ever seen. It's just rocks that he spray painted. No. It is. Let me see. Yeah, that's fake. But I didn't spray paint them, I swear. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't? Totally did, Michelle. He's getting you on technicality, Riley. He didn't spray paint them. How do you know? Because this bag is from the Historical Society. See? It says so right on the bottom. You stole this bag from the museum? No. Yes, he did. I really didn't. Yes, he did. I helped him. River, you said you wouldn't tell. Sorry, man, but I feel like I'm going to die soon, and I don't want to go with a guilty conscience. Well, Nickerson? I have an explanation. Okay. They left the case unlocked, and that means it isn't really stealing. You stole from a museum? Borrowed. I'll bring it back. That's like stealing from a church. Why would you take them anyway? It's a worthless bag of rocks. I wanted to make sure when we found the gold, we'd know what it looked like. He's lying. He was going to plant it at the mine and try to fool all of you. River. Still dying over here, remember? I should report you to the museum. Come on. It was just a joke. Pretty lame, man. And just for that, you don't get to be the navigator anymore. I don't want to be the stupid navigator. I want to drive the stupid boat. Move. Hey! Just move. How do you steer this thing? Hey, this is fun. Nickerson, watch out. You're going to run us aground. We can't run on the ground, remember? This is a boat. He's headed right for the island. Hard to port. Hard to port. Okay. No! Nickerson. You crashed us into the dock. You told me hard to port. I thought that meant drive hard into the port or the dock or whatever. It means turn left. Well, why didn't you just say that? What's going on? Were you asleep all this time? Yeah, Riley told me to get a life jacket, and they were all stashed in this little cupboard. It looks so comfortable in there, I just crawled in. Are we at the gold mine? No, we're still miles away. Oh, who's the old guy? What old guy? That one, right there. Hello, children. Ah! You seem to have had a little trouble with your boat. Yes, sir. I don't think we damaged your dock much. Not much, no, but your vessel has a nasty little scratch there. Beautiful craft, too. Yes, sir. Tell me, how is it young seamen such as yourselves are on the lake alone this fine day? (laughs) Seamen. Shh. We, uh, we were just taking the boat out for Spain with our parents' permission. They're camping on that island, right over there. Over there? There are no campsites on that island. Oh, I meant over there. I see. Well, you'd better step ashore, children. I shall make sure your boat is fast, and then I would be most honored if you'd be our guests for lunch. That's okay. We should... No, no, I insist. Uh, May I offer you a hand, young lady? Um, okay. Now, the rest of you, come along. That's it. Uh, Very good. Be careful there. Yes, yes. help the little ones. Uh, good. Yes, uh, good. Has everyone set foot on dry land? Ah, that's fine. My, you don't look good at all. Sorry, seasick. A little food will do you good, then. What's for lunch? Whatever you fix, of course. What? Oh, did I forget to mention? You have wandered very close to the U.S.-Canadian border. So close, in fact... That this island straddles the line. You mean we're in Canada? Almost. It's right over there. So we're in the U.S. Wrong again. This island, as it turns out, has been in dispute for over 200 years. 
Governors have argued, armies have clashed, yet still this island belongs to neither nation. So we're in no man's land? Don't be silly. You're in this man's land. I am Lucius Rockefeller Cooperstown Thurber the third, owner of this island. Cool. So it's like you own your own country? What a bright boy you are. I think I will make you my house slave. Uh, what? You see, children, you have stepped foot on what is essentially an independent country. My independent country. I call it Freedomburg. I am its parliament, prime minister, and king. And the second you set foot here, you all came under my rule. What? Everything that touches my island belongs to me, including all of you. <laughs> That's it. Pour gently. This is really hard with these white gloves. You'll get the hang of it. After all, you don't become a good butler in one day. I don't want to be a butler at all. Should have thought of that before you ran into my dock. So, do you just live here by yourself? Of course not. Sweetums! Ah, here is my queen now. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. They've upped the price of beef jerky again. No! It's true. I shall not be able to survive at this rate. Are you sure we couldn't invade the United States? Ah, quite, darling. Their navy is still larger than ours. What if we bought a second boat? No, I fear that wouldn't be quite enough. Well, do something, won't you? Yes, dear. Uh, Who's this? Oh, I have a surprise for you, dearest. We have a new butler. (gasps) Splendid! He's a little young, isn't he? That's the best part. We could train this one exactly the way we want him. That's brilliant. Much better than that lumberjack who dropped beard hairs in my custard. You're so clever, sweetums. Oh, I thank you, my little cabbage. And that's not all. There's more? Oh, watch this. You ring, sir? (gasps) A cook? Yes, with another girl to be the scullery maid, and two more to be gardeners. Though one is rather small. An entire staff? Just as my queen deserves. What would you like for lunch? I don't know. (gasps) Chef, what's your specialty? I make pretty good pancakes. No, no, no. We must have pheasant and goose livers and other fancy things. Goose livers? I don't know. You're the chef. No, I'm not. I'm 13. I know how to cook pancakes, macaroni and cheese, and scrambled eggs. I can do spaghetti. Quiet! You're the butler. And as for you, you were 13 in the outside world. Here, on the sovereign island of Friedenberg, you are as old as I say you are. What? He's crazy. So I say you're 36. I don't know how to be 36. Well, I'm sure you'll learn. Now, my little cabbage, I have one more surprise for you. Oh, I hope it's a good one. Oh, it's the best one yet. Oh, jester! A jester! A real live jester! Just like King Arthur and Guinevere. Nice outfit, Nickerson. Quiet. This is my big chance. To do what? Okay. Why did the kid run screaming away from the school? Because he was chased by the spelling bee. Uh, what? Oh, you don't like that one? Okay. Why are school lunch ladies mean? Because they batter the fish, beat the eggs, and <laughs> whip the cream. Uh, dearest, I think you'd better make this one 36 too. He needs some seasoning. All right. Audience participation time. Ah, goody. I love this. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> huh? He got you, dear. Oh, he did indeed. <laughs> That's the stupidest joke I've ever heard. Quiet, butler. Yeah, quiet, butler. Nickerson, what are you doing? I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. And besides, I really like these shoes. 
Look, sir, our parents are going to come look for us. You can't keep us here. I can if I feel like it. It's kidnapping. In your country, it's kidnapping. Friedenberg does not recognize the laws of your United States. It's okay. What do you mean it's okay? I have a plan. Okay, your royalness. Juggling time. <gasps> what talent? Oh. 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 Wait, I just about got it. Or not. Darn, I almost had it that time. Chester, what exactly are you juggling there? Oh, these? These are a part of my family fortune. No, they're not. They're just some of those spray-painted rocks you stole from the museum. No, they're part of my family fortune, Michelle. (gasps) Oh, that family fortune. They're beautiful. Give them here, boy. I'm sorry, King, but I can't. You will, because I say you will. Yeah, no. Then I'll take them from you. Gotta catch me first. Come back here. Never. Good heavens, he's speedy. You'd think the bell shoes would slow him down. You'll never catch me, your royal highness. I'm very young and spry for 36. But... But? I might be willing to arrange for a trade. A trade, eh? Oh, As a sovereign nation, I've always wanted to engage in trade. Very well, Jester. What did you have in mind? One solid gold nugget in exchange for the freedom of each of my friends. No, I like having a staff. Uh, but sweetums, with the gold, we can afford to hire a new staff. Maybe even ones that actually know how to cook. Hey, I said I could make pancakes. Quiet, I think I know what Nickerson is doing. What are these nuggets worth? I don't know. Check the commodities market in this morning's paper. (gasps) Look, dear. Gold is over $400 an ounce. Really? How many ounces of gold in that nugget? I don't know. Fifty? (gasps) Fifty? We're rich. We were always rich. We own our own country. Well, we're richer then. Very well, Jester. Two gold nuggets per person. What? Take it or leave it. That's our final offer. I don't know. Nickerson? I gotta haggle with him. It won't seem real otherwise. I'm gonna go find Petey and River. You get Susie and meet us at the boat. Right. Say, what's all that whispering over there? Just talking about how much we love it in Friedenburg, O King. And how we're going to recommend you to all the chefs and butlers we know. Ah, well, in that case, carry on. So it turned out that Nickerson's terrible jokes and thieving nature actually came in handy. Ten minutes later, the kids were all back on the boat, nervously starting the motor with an eye on the great big house in the center of the island. But the crazy couple never appeared, and all the kids made a clean getaway. I think we should turn back. We can still get to Cormorant Bay and back before dinner. We'll just have to eat lunch in the boat. While we're moving? Guys, I really don't think River's going to be able to eat in the boat. That's okay. I only brought enough for Susie and me anyway. What? Our cover story was Susie and I going on a picnic, remember? How was I supposed to explain packing enough food for all of us? Well, what are we going to do about eating? I don't think I could eat anything. Well, look! What is it? Remember that time when we went blueberry picking with Grandma and she told us how to tell if an island had blueberries on it? That island has the right kind of bushes. You can see them. It's a little late for blueberries. Pull in there, Michelle. There's got to be something. Okay, but we can only stay five minutes. Blueberries! And would you take off those ridiculous shoes? Never! I'm going to wear these till high school. Wow, that'll be something to see. From a distance, while I'm denying I was ever your friend. What do you mean? Jester shoes are cool. Okay, we're tied to this tree. Five minutes, you guys. Then we have to get moving again. Yes, Mother. Susie, get that lunchbox I brought. Okay. Where do you want to eat? How about up on that hill? It looks like there's some bears up there. Berry! 
blueberries. Be careful. They don't look like blueberries. They don't? Well, they don't look exactly like blueberries. Doesn't matter. I'm starving. Mmm, these are good. Don't take them all. Gotta keep my strength up. We're gonna be mining in a little while. We'll save some for the rest of us. Come on, Pete. Do I like these berries? Never know unless you try. Come on. You wanna try half a sandwich, River? No, I think I'll try a couple of berries first. I wish you guys wouldn't dive into those things. We don't even know what they are. They're almost like blueberries, but they're kind of weird looking. All I know is that they taste good. They really do. Try one, Michelle. I packed a lunch. Yeah, but if you eat these now, we could save the lunch for the way back. Well, River, are the blueberries okay? I think so. I feel a little better. Well, okay. Hmm. They are pretty good. Ow! What's wrong? A snicker vine got me. Oh, yeah. Be careful. These bushes have thorns. Blueberries don't have thorns. No, they don't. Ow! Careful. It wasn't me. It was the bush. Come on, Nickerson. No, really. I was being really careful of the thorns, but that vine reached out and grabbed me. Don't be silly. Ow! Ah! What? What is it? That vine just moved to grab Michelle's ankle. No, it didn't. I just got caught. It did. I saw it. And the one around my leg is getting tighter. I can feel it. We're just getting tangled. That's all. Don't panic. Guys! Ah! She's two feet off the ground. River, what happened? Don't know, man. I reached for some more berries and something grabbed my arm and then grabbed my leg and then my other arm. We gotta get her out of there. Can you reach her, Nickerson? I think so. Let me just... Ah! You saw it that time, right? The vine just reached out and grabbed Nickerson's arm. Help me! Relax. Relax. It's it's gonna be okay. How? I don't know. It just seemed like the right thing to say. Can anybody move? I can move my left foot a little. Oh, oh okay. Never mind. What is going on with this trip? We never should have left home. All right, everyone, just cool it. We are going to get out of this. We're going to keep going, and we're going to find the gold mine at Cormorant Bay. How? Yeah, what's the plan, Riley? Um, um, okay, I got an idea. Yes? Everyone, follow my lead. Help, help, someone! That's your big plan? You got a better idea? Help! 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 Give it up, Riley. I can't shout anymore. We've been shouting for hours. Okay, plan B. We gotta figure out how to loosen these mines. I've been trying to do that the whole time we were shouting, man. There's no way. There's gotta be a way. If you get something loose, other vines just reach out and grab you more. The more you fidget, the the more tangled you get. I'm scared. Okay, take it easy, Pete. It's okay, buddy. We'll get out of here. I want to go home. Okay, let's rest our voices for a little bit. Then take turns calling for help. We'll shout all night if we have to. Won't do any good. (gasps) You scared me. Please, please, sir, can you help us? Well, now what seems to be the problem there, little lady? It's the vines. We got all tangled up. Tangled up? You mean you can't get out? No, it's like they reached out and grabbed us. And every time we try to move, they just wrap us up tighter. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what suicide vines do. What did you just call them? Suicide vines. On account of anyone trying to eat them berries is committing suicide. Well, we didn't know. Yeah, I feel bad about that. I was over on the other side of the island most of the day. Would have warned you off if I'd seen you. Is this your island, sir? Well, there's no need to be calling me sir, missy. My name's Hobo Bob. Lived on this island for five years now. If you help us get out, we can help you. We have a boat. Yeah, I saw that. It's a real nice one, too, but no, son, I've got no interest in leaving. This island's my home, and these vines, well, they're my job. Your job? 
I watch over them, make sure they don't grow too big, warn some folks away from them, stand by while others fall to their doom. What's going to happen to us? Well, I'd just soon not say. Won't make the next two days any easier. Two days? What happens in two days? It usually takes them about two days to finish their work. Sir, you can't let us die like this. Look, we have little kids with us. Michelle? It's okay. It'll be okay. Well, I'm sorry, kids. I truly am. But the vines, they're kind of like a storm or an earthquake. They they take whatever and whomever they want. Nothing I can do. Unless. Unless what? Nah. No, really, what? Well, you kids wouldn't happen to have anything to trade, would you? We could give you the a ride to the mainland. Not interested. We have a lunch. Mm, what is it? Tuna fish sandwiches. Ugh, definitely not interested. Then how about gold? What did you say? River, no. We have to. Quit that whispering now. What's all this about gold? Just that we have some man, and I figured you want some. What makes you think like that, little lady? Why else would someone be out on these islands? Like I said, I protect folks from the suicide vines. That pays a lot, does it? I get by. River, what are you doing? He says his name is Hobo Bob. Pop used to tell me stories about a hobo named Bob. Said he lived on the lake, moving from island to island, looking for gold. Well, he can't have any of mine. What's that? Nothing. He didn't say anything. Character in the funny shoes has gold, does he? Uh, Of course not. We're just a bunch of kids out on a spree. How could we possibly have any gold? That's right. How could you? Ah, why am I wasting my time? You don't have any gold. You couldn't get at it anyway. River! And what's that supposed to mean? My friend may have ridiculous shoes, but he's no dummy. He keeps his gold on him at all times, and that means you can't get at it. Oh, yeah? Not unless you want to wade through these vines with us. Ha! That's what you think, is it? Hang on. Ha! Found it! What are you doing? You weren't listening so good. I told you these vines were my job. Folks get tangled up in them all the time. Some of them pretty rich. They pay a pretty penny to get loose. Watch this. Hey, they moved. Oh, don't move around so much. They'll tighten back down if they think you're trying to get away. You controlled the vines with a flute? I wouldn't say control. It's more like I tease them. Now, let's see about your pockets, Jingle Shoes. <laughs> ah, no, they stuck me. I'll say he doesn't control them. Uh, I hate those vines. Nearly had me that time. Can you get us out or not? Of course I can get you out, but I want to see your gold first. Can you free just one of us? I suppose. Free me. Yeah, free Nickerson. Why? Because I've got the gold. All right. Now you get ready, boy. When you feel that vine loosen up, you snatch up your hand or foot or whatever like your life depended on it. Understand? I thought my life did depend on it. Good, you understand. Here we go. I got one hand. Ow! Keep fighting, Nickerson. And a foot. Two feet. Ah, the thorns. You gotta fight through it. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah, Nickerson. Woo! You got it. He's free. Thank you. Thank you. For my next trick. Hey! Now, where's that gold? Let go of my shirt. Quit fooling around and show me that gold. Okay, okay. Just let go. Thanks. Now turn around. What? I'm not going to show you where I hide it. Just turn around. Oh, fine. And you can turn back. This had better be good. How do you like that? Solid gold nugget. Ain't that pretty. Ain't that pretty indeed. So you see, Mr. Hobo Bob, sir, we can pay you. We can pay you a lot. A lot? How much do you have? A whole bag full. Susie! Well, I want out of here. Oh, it's all right, sweetheart. I'm going to get every one of you out of there, provided there's more gold where this came from. Oh, there is. A whole bag full, you say? Yeah. Susie! It's all right. All right. I'm a businessman, and I don't want to see you kids ate up by those vines anyhow. How about this, Jingle Shoes? You stand way over there, show me the bag, then don't hand over one nugget till I've played all your friends free. Well... How about one nugget for each of them and I keep the rest? Nickerson. It worked on the rich people. I got got all day. Boy, that's my offer. Take it or leave it. Oh, fine. Okay, here's the bag. That's all I need to see. (laughs) Let that be a lesson to you all. The love of gold leads to no good. 
Except, of course, in this case, where the love of gold by Hobo Bob blinded him to the fact that he was getting a bag full of spray-painted rocks. Point is, the kids got out of those vines and down to the boat and away before Hobo Bob examined his treasure too closely. Why does the bag say property of a historical society? Which was good, because he was awfully mad when he figured it out. Why those little... The adventure with the vines and Hobo Bob had taken a long time and the sun was already setting by the time the kids made their getaway. Now, they are faced with a very tough choice. No. Yes. I think we should. No, we've come this far. Okay, so we know Michelle and Susie feel wimpy. And we know Riley and Pete are being idiots. Or brave. Yeah! So that leaves River and Nickerson to decide. What? No! What do you mean, no? This is not a vote. We need to go home. Why? Because it's like... 8 o'clock. We're in huge trouble as it is. Which is all the more reason to keep going. We're going to be in trouble no matter what we do. Well, I'm the pilot of the boat, and I want to turn back. You can't. I already have. What? Wait a minute. Which direction are we going? Riley, if you had been piloting this boat, we would have been hopelessly lost by now. Yeah, well, maybe it's time for a mutiny. Fine. Take the wheel. We'll probably end up crashing into a reef and drowning. What is with you anyway? What is it with you? You're acting like we're all having fun. This whole trip has been a disaster. We are lucky we aren't dead or enslaved by crazy people. We're in huge trouble as it is, and Nickerson is probably going to jail for stealing museum exhibits. What? And my mom is going to be furious, and Susie's mom will never trust me again, and there probably isn't even a stupid gold mine. I know that. What? I know that there probably isn't a real, really a gold mine. I, I never thought there was. Then why? Why are we doing this? Because you're leaving and everything else is changing. I don't know what things are going to be like when school starts. I've only been inside the junior high building like twice. But I know if we do this together, if we take this trip, at least we'd, be ha- we'd have one more day when we'd be in charge. We could decide what we were going to do, even if what we did was really stupid. But we're going to get in big trouble. We're going to get in big trouble tomorrow. Today is today. But it's almost dark out. You know this lake really well, better than anyone. And I was looking at the charts before lunch. It's deep water between here and Cormorant Bay. And there's no reefs or anything. We just have to get there. How are we supposed to look for a gold mine in the dark? Flashlights. Besides, I don't care if we never find a nugget. I changed my mind. I want to keep going. Are you sure? You're going to get home late. I'm sure. River, are we over halfway? Yeah, we probably have less than a mile to go. I'm for whatever gets me out of this boat the soonest, man. Does anyone care what I think? Sorry, Nickerson. What do you think? I think you need to get me into Canada so I can begin my life on the lamb. I'm wanted for museum theft in the U.S. Okay, so Nickerson's in. I figured Nickerson was in. He's basically a criminal already. Thank you. Yeah. Why do you stop? There it is. We're here. What? But we're out in the middle of the light. Okay, so we're not exactly here. But look over the side. What is it, Michelle? See that buoy in front of us? Yeah. That's the international boundary. The United States ends right there. You you mean that's Canada on the other side? Yep. Wow. So, where's Cormorant Bay? I think it's that tree line right over there. About a hundred yards. Right there, huh? But you guys understand, right? We cross this line, we're breaking the law. 
and not even the law in our own country. Speak for yourself, babe. My dad's Canadian. I'm dual citizen. Oh, that's settled. If we get caught, just let River do the talking. I'm not talking for you, man. You are bad news. What? I thought we were friends. You think I want you messing up my country? You're a criminal. Well, isn't that nice? Fire it up, Michelle. Let's go steal Wayne Gretzky's gold. You sure? Last chance? You aren't really going to try to talk us out of it again, are you? No, I guess not. And to be honest, now that we've come this far... Onward! Let's loot Canada! You're pointing the wrong way, Nickerson. Oh. Well, onward! Let's loot Canada! Uh, over there! Boat tied up? Yeah. Everyone got a flashlight? Yeah, I got it. I don't know. I, I kind of lost no. Okay, there's a path here. I see we go down it. Into the scary woods? I don't think there's going to be a gold mine along the beach, Beatty. I don't want to look for the mine anymore. Haven't we had enough adventure yet? You guys stay close to me. You'll be safe. How do you know? Because we're going to stay as far away from Nickerson as possible. Oh, that makes sense. You guys don't know how to have fun. Come on! Wait up. He's walking into the woods without a flashlight. That's his idea of fun. He talks about it all the time. At least we can keep track of him because of those shoes. Ah! You had to say it, didn't you? That didn't sound good. Nickerson. What do we do? Come on, let's just move carefully. Into the woods? Just stay close. Okay. Nickerson. You think he's okay? I don't know. We He didn't have a light. Yo, Nick, jingle your bells once if you're okay. Did you hear that? It was up here. Nickerson! There, right there. Where is it coming from? Is it that tree? Shine your light over there. Hey, Michelle. We're coming. Shine your lights on the street. Okay. Is that a hole? Nickerson, you down there? I fell. Are you all right? Yes, I think I found the mine. I'm going down there. River, wait. Dude, we're going to have to go down there to get him anyway. I don't Chill think- out, man. You guys don't think this is one of Nickerson's dumb jokes, do you? After all we've been through? Guys, come down here. What? Go down in the hole? River, is it safe? It's a little dirty, but it's like a slide. You sit on the edge of the hole and let yourself go. You'll slide right in. What? I'll go. You sure, Petey? Don't call me that. Do you want your flashlight? Nah, I can see River's light down below. Geronimo! Michelle, could we slide down together? I don't know, Susie. Guys, you gotta come down here. It's a Please? Well, you'll be right behind us, Riley? Yeah, I will. Promise. Okay, come on. Whee! Okay, I can do this. Look out below! Uh, uh, uh. Hey, Riley. Hey, Nickerson. Look what I found. Wow, is that... I don't know, but it kind of glitters when you shine your light on the walls. I don't think gold actually glitters until you refine it. It could be pyrite. How do you know about that? Jeez, Riley, read a book. (laughs) Yeah, Riley. Shut up. There's some old mining equipment over here. Cool, a pickaxe. I'm totally taking this home. There's another tunnel over there. Whoa. Is it safe? I don't know. They've got these wooden things every few feet. Timbers. They're called timbers. So, someone built this tunnel? Definitely. That's a standard mine shaft. And look, there's little train tracks on the ground. They hauled carts of ore up and down this tunnel. You're really smart, Pete. How come you were so scared up on the beach, but now you're totally chill? I like holes, and this tunnel's cool. Besides, there's an entrance at the other end. How do you know? Listen. You hear that sound? That's wind blowing up through the tunnel from the other end. 
There's got to be an entrance down there. Let's go find it. Yeah, I'm ready for anything now that I got a pickaxe. Okay. Watch out you don't trip on the track, Susie. <coughs> okay. You sure this tunnel is safe? Well, the timbers don't look run, and that breeze from below means we won't die of poison gas. Poison what? What I want to know is why there is such a tiny opening back there. Yeah, and how did you find it, Nickerson? I ran into the tree, and the next thing I knew, the ground was giving out beneath me. Wouldn't be the first time. You calling me fat? That entrance probably used to be bigger. Brush grew over it. Or someone was hiding it. Ooh, gonna be so rich. What are you gonna do with your share, River? Hire a plane to take me home. I'm not looking forward to another long boat ride. No one's going anywhere just yet. <gasps> oh no! It's, it's, what's his name? It is I, Lucius Rockefeller Cooperstown Thurber, the third. And you have something that belongs to me. We decided we wanted our things back, including our staff. Well, uh, we had a deal, remember? Oh, yes. It was for two gold nuggets per person. The only problem is those nuggets weren't gold. What? That's an outrage. We decided to break them into smaller pieces so they'd last longer and discovered it was regular old rock inside. Oh. Well, I hear gold doesn't glitter until it's refined. You welched on our deal. So I want what is mine. I don't have anything that belongs to you. Oh, yeah. Give them the shoes, Nickerson. Oh, I'm afraid it's much too late for that. What? I do want my jester shoes back, but I want to make sure your friend is in them. And the rest of you can come back and get right to work. Riley, what do we do? It's okay, I have a plan. Everyone back away slowly. It is where do you think you're going? Ah! You there! What's the meaning of this? Who's that? Thurber? Hobo Bob! So we meet again. Heavens! It's that awful miner! This ain't your little country, Thurber. You got no claim on this mine. Nor do we want one. We just have business with these young people. Oh, that makes two of us. They've been passing bad coin. What? I resent that remark. We didn't give away bad coins. Bad gold, then. Oh, so they got you too, eh? Yeah, so step aside there, Richie Rich. I got business with these kids. What's gonna happen? Just keep still. Riley has a plan. I had a plan until Hobo Bob came down the tunnel and cut off our escape. We'll do something. Okay, I'm really sorry about the rocks. Sorry don't pay the piper. Indeed. Well, yeah, but you guys were going to keep us as slaves. <gasps> Nonsense. We had every intention of paying you with bread and water. And on your island, we were trapped by those mines and thought we were going to die. Oh, I wouldn't have let you die. Not all of you, anyway. So, I'm sorry that we lied about the rocks, and I'm sorry that we took the jester shoes. I'm not. Be that as it may, you pass bad coin. And where I come from, that cannot stand. What... What are you going to do? Well, I hadn't thought about that much, but it seems like my vines could use a little fertilizer. What? Or maybe I'll just contact your folks with a ransom demand. No, no, none of that. This is our new staff. They're coming back to Friedenberg with us. And that is still a really stupid name. How dare you, sir! With the high hat, Why, I, I can't. What do we do, Riley? Pete? Five yeah? Years. How sure are you there's an entrance at the other end? Pretty sure. What are you thinking about, man? Make you no run for it. But we're trapped. Both sides of the tunnel are blocked. Who would you rather try and run by? The old crazy people or the big leathery ho hobo with the magic flute? Good point. Besides, man, you got your pickaxe. Hey, that's right. You ready? Ready for what? Attack! Look out! The putty boy's got an antique pickaxe! Oh no! The prophecy! What do we do? Follow Nickerson. Hey, come back here. Ah! He's got Petey. Oh, no, he doesn't. Ow, my big toe. Ah, oh. Come on, Pete. Horrible beast. Keep that axe away from us. Ha, huh, you like that? Try some of this. Yeah! Ah! <gasps> Nickerson, we're past them. The tunnel's clear. Come on. You got it, boss. Jingle shoes away. Are 
Are they coming? Yeah, man, I can see them back there. All we have to do is keep ahead of them and we'll be... Whoa! I thought you said there was an entrance, Pete. I said there was air flowing through, and there is. See? Where? Up there? Yeah, you can see the moon shining through the hole. It's not even a foot across, and it's too high to reach. Well, ain't that bad news. Quite. How many do you need for your staff, Thurber? We could make do with two or three. That leaves three for plant food. <laughs> make sure to take the one with the bells on his shoes. I don't think we'll be needing a jester after all. I don't care which, so long as I got a few for my vines. Oh, no. I'm so sorry, Michelle. I'm sorry, too. What for? If I wouldn't have goofed off in Fayed so much, maybe I could kung fu them with this axe. I'm sorry you were seasick, River. It's cool. I just wish we could have gone to junior high. Yeah. Michelle, are we really... It's okay. Just be still. And I'm sorry, Pete. I didn't mean to drag you into this... Pete? Pete? Riley? What? What is it? Who... who's that? Ah! What's wrong with all of you? There, there's someone behind you! Now you expect us to fall for that old trick? Oh, that's rich. <laughs> My sweetness is back at the other end of the tunnel. She refused to dignify these urchins by chasing them. He must see her. No, we don't see her. Well, then who is it you think you... <laughs> What? What is it? Thurber! Thurber! There's someone in the tunnel with us! Don't be ridiculous. Now, help me disarm the urchins. You gotta look! I refuse to look. He's a miner, and he's all cut up, and he's glowing! What are you trying to say, Bob? It's... it's... it's mutilated Jones! Ah! Bob! Bob! What on earth is wrong with... <laughs> Pay the price. Pay the price. Michelle, stay close. Riley, what do we do? I, I... Don't you go running down the tunnel, too. Maybe the ghost disappeared to save us. Maybe he's a friendly ghost. Pay the price. Ah! He's coming closer. Pay the price. What does he want? What's the price? I don't think I want to know. Riley, what do we do? I don't know. Pay the price. Nickerson, he's pointing at you. I knew it. I'm sorry for everything I ever did. No, he's pointing at your pickaxe. Pay the price. Well, why, what do I do? Set it at his feet. Set what? The pickaxe. Uh, I don't have it. Yes, you do. It's in your hand. Oh, right. Okay. Now what? I don't know, Petey, you read anything about ghosts? No, they're too scary. Under the circumstances, I agree with you. Look, he's just gazing at the axe. He looks so sad. Yeah. Are you feeling sorry for the mutilated minder ghost that's standing right in front of us? Well, look at him. He wishes he could pick it up and mine again, but he can't. The prize. What's he doing? He's pointing over to that wall. He's gone. Just faded away. Listen, do you hear anyone else in the mine? Nope. You think that means the grown-ups ran away? Yeah. Pete, what are you doing? Checking the spot mutilated Jones was pointing to. But what could he possibly be? Ah! What? What is it? Riley, look. There's... There's a skeleton under here. Really? Cool. Hey, there's a foot sticking out. I'm going to be ill. There are toes missing. You're right. And that arm just ends. No hand. You mean... Yes. This is the body of mutilated Jones. Should we have a funeral? What? No. We have to get home. No. Wait. That's exactly what we should do. What do you mean? The ghost said pay the price, right? He saved our lives, so we have to pay the price now. We gotta give him a decent burial. So, how do we do that? Isn't he kind of buried already? We have to move him out of there, and we have to find a nice spot up on the island. Maybe under a tree where he can see the sunset. Then we have to dig a grave and say some words. 
How do you know so much about funerals, Susie? I like all kinds of parties. Including funerals. My parents are slightly worried. Well, it's cool with me, man, but how do we move him? Here, I'll put down my coat. We can use that to collect the bones. We just have to be really careful. Why? He's not going to feel it. We have to be respectful. Right. Rever? Neckerson? Yeah? I think there's some camping equipment in the boat. See if you can find a shovel or, or something. And start on the grave. Okay. Susie, go with them and pick a nice spot, okay? Okay. Then I'll come back and help you move him. Doesn't this scare you? Not as much as digging the grave and hitting a worm. Ew. Wait. It's going to be daylight soon, Nickerson. We have to get started. I know. But wait a second. Move his skull. I thought I saw something. Okay. Gently. What? What is that? It's... It's a bag. What? Michelle, can you reach it? Y- yes What's inside? I'm... I'm not sure. It doesn't glitter, but... But you said yourself. It, it needs to be refined first. Yeah. Come on, guys. We said we would pay the price. Yeah. Little Petey was right. They had made a promise to that ghost, and they kept it, too. They gently moved all the bones they could find to a grave river and Nickerson dug on a little spot overlooking the bay. Then they said a few words, thanking the ghost for saving them from the crazy rich people and murderous hobos. And then they took turns putting dirt on the grave until he was covered up. Then the kids packed up and headed home, a full 12 hours after they were due. They got into huge trouble, of course. Or at least they would have until their parents saw what they brought back from Comorant Bay. It took some time and a lot of lawyers to figure out who the gold really belonged to, but eventually a trust was set up in the name of each kid in the group. And with the rest of the money, the parents went in together and bought the mill in town. All layoffs were officially canceled. Michelle's family changed their mind about leaving, seeing as their father was now part owner of the mill. And Michelle, River, and Riley started junior high in the fall, just like they were supposed to. Junior high did change things, of course. But after their little adventure, the group was stronger than ever. And the following summer, junior high or not, saw all six of them back at the treehouse, sitting around, bored, with nothing to do. Riley, you've got that schemey look again. Yeah, he does. Totally. What is it, Riley? You want to tell him, Pete? Nah, you go ahead. Well... I was thinking, there's this deserted cabin down by Kell Falls that's supposed to be haunted. Can we steal a plane? Nickerson! Shoot, I never get to steal a plane. This has been The Gold of Comorant Bay from the Icebox Radio Theater, written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. The cast, listed here by Age of Character, featured Ella Barr as Petey, Gavia Yunt was Susie, Rebecca Salo was River, Ellie Nelson portrayed Nickerson, David Griffith was Riley, Jana Hendrickson was Michelle, Jeffrey Adams played Hobo Bob, Karen Schickel was Mrs. Thurber, and Jim Yunt was Mr. Thurber. Sound effects realized by Dave Irwin. Post-production and sound design by Jeffrey Adams. The songs At Launch, Call to Adventure, Sneaky Adventure, Take a Chance, and The Snow Queen, provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. This program is copyright 2015 by the Icebox Radio Theater, all rights reserved. If you like the gold of Comorant Bay and would like to support its creators, consider making a donation or becoming a theater member at iceboxradio.org.
It can be in the sound of the orchestra preparing, or in the sound of a sculptor working in stone, or even in the sound of laughter from inside a theater. It is the sound of art being created, and for over three decades, the sound of art being created has rung loud and clear in northeastern Minnesota. The Arrowhead Regional Arts Council has been encouraging local arts development in northeastern Minnesota through grants and services for over 35 years. Every year, they give out more than half a million dollars to local artists and arts organizations, and that helps create $40 million in revenue and jobs created. To find out more about our arts programs or how you can get involved, visit aracouncil.org. The Arrowhead Regional Arts Council, where the arts flourish, you thrive.